Alright, how's it going? It's been a minute. I've uh, been studying up, trying to figure out the strategies and tricks and, you know, sneaky little underhanded things that go into playing as On Her. So, let's see. On Her is your basic physical damage hunter in the Egyptian Pantheon. He's, you know, he's, he's a good amount of fun to play. Uh, let's see here. These are his starting stats. You can see that, um,. He actually has pretty decent protections for a hunter. Still a hunter, but has decent protections. Starting health at 538. Um, his damage starts at 43% plus 100% physical power, which is you know is important. That's, that's important for hunters. Um, he has a comparatively slow uh, attack speed. Um, Amazon Ka starts at 0.97. Um, and Apollo starts at 0.97. Let's see. Kunus, 1.01. Um, Chena. 0.97. So you can see on her actually starts at 0.92, which is not considerably lower, but in the grand scheme of things, as things level up, it will scale slower. So attack speed isn't usually your best bet for on her, but we'll get into that later. Um, so you can see quickly at level 20 that he has just a bit more health. His attack speed would, would max out at 1.21 um, natively. That's without any uh, items or anything like that. So you can see he's still got those decent protections. Um, so, that said, I can go over his abilities really quick. Um, so, I'm just looking at everything here. That's my KD. That's trash. Okay. Yep, so that's neat. So, here we are. Alright, so his passive is Enfeeble, which is a debuff applied to enemies hit by his spear. Uh, reduces the enemy target's physical protection for three seconds. So you can see already that his um, his kit and sort of his whole deal is that he reduces protections uh, or shreds protections, so to speak, and then penetrates them. So uh, penetration on her is usually what's uh, intended and successful in battle. So that's what you kind of want to want to look at when you're playing as on her is you want to look at protection shredding and um, well just kind of chopping up your enemies. And there's a couple of different ways to play him, which will be gone over quickly um, and efficient efficiently. We've got shifting sands here, which is a ground target. It is a um, an area radius is 30 units. So uh, you stick an obelisk from the ground, it blocks all player movement. So that obelisk in the center cannot be moved through or over. The sand slows enemies and increases damage of basic attacks against targets that are stuck in them. Um, this is important. This is very key to most of on her strategy. Um, the, the slow scales all the way to 35%, which is pretty dang good late game, especially if you have other slow effects being applied. Um, uh, Nemesis, Nemesis Cone, that sort of thing. Um, it really stacks up and gets a little crazy. People can feel like they're completely stunned when really they're just at like 60-80% slow, which is just ridiculous. Um, and then you got your damage buff, which scales all the way to 20%. At level 20, which is uh, actually kind of incredible, and then that's going to stay up for about seven seconds. And the cooldown is obviously changeable, so we don't even need to go over that. Cost is um, simple. All right, so now we have impale. Impale is your typical line ability. You throw your spear. All right, but here's the difference: is that it hits uh, knockback. So if they knock back into a wall, they're stunned, um, and enemies hit by the god that's being pushed take damage as well. Um, and the spear goes through minions, so you can actually stick someone through a minion, so the, the minions aren't going to stop it, basically. So that's 90 to 350, plus 80% of physical power, and the stun duration goes all the way up to 1.5 seconds um, later in the game. Um, important thing to note is that because the pillar stops movement, um, the sand slow enemies, and increases the damage of basic attacks, the pillar is technically a wall. So, that said, when you bring up your pillar behind an enemy or on a trapped enemy against a wall, line up your uh, your spear here, and you want to get your spear impale on that pillar, a pillar stun, so to speak. So, once you get your pillar stun, you'll have done a decent amount of damage. You start following up with basic attacks, and those basic attacks are going to do additional damage. It's a pretty solid combo. Um, the stun not being that long of a stun is pretty much permanently useful. Um, just because if anybody's standing nearby that can actually help you capitalize on that, the enemy's going to die. There's no question about it. So next we have Disperse, which is a leap, 15 meter radius, when he lands on the ground. <clears throat> so he leaps right to his target location, doing damage and knocking back enemies in the radius. This is important because um, the knockback is actually 
pretty, pretty effective as a knockback as, as a CC. Um, so you're really good at helping out your teammates and stuff, and that kind of plays into him being a slightly tankier um, hunter, just just slightly. Don't take that to heart that he's tank. He's he's not he's not necessarily a tank. He's just slightly tankier. So that's 70 to 230 plus 60 percent of physical power. Not a whole lot of damage. Um, has a 15 second cooldown. Again, reducible. And then Desert Fury. This is his final form, so to speak. So, uh, on her uh, throws uh, just a ridiculous amount of spears. They pass through anything and everything. So they will go through walls. They will go through um, enemy gods. They will go through anything that you throw them at. Um, and they do damage to anybody that they hit, obviously. Um, this also gives them CC immunity. So you get 60 to 170 plus 30% of physical power, and you throw 8 of these. Um, I do believe if you click multiple times while you're casting it, you can actually throw faster or, or slower, but that was back in the old days, so I'm actually not certain um, that you can still control the speed at which you throw the spears at all anymore. Um, but we'll get into that. So that said, let's head over to jungle practice. And see what we see. Both. Alright, so just something I forgot to mention in the original recording is that the pillar stun, as I had dubbed it, um, is not required to be done with the pillar. You can actually stick someone to any wall with a stun. I don't actually know if this is a more recent update or if it's always been this way, but that is how things stand. You can actually do the stun with any wall, and that means any wall. So I can push this Odin. Yep, he'll stun on that wall. Oh. And that pillar stun goes for any wall as in Thor's Earth Shatter or Kabraken's ultimate. All walls will actually cause a stun if an enemy is pushed into them. Okay, so here we are. Let's pump up these levels just really quick. All right, so we've got the pillar. My we've got the spear. We've got the and then we've got the ultimate. Great. So, let's give a quick demonstration of his. Uh, didn't mean to reset level. I meant to reset cooldowns, but that's too bad. All right, so. We're going to give a demonstration of his base damage. Nothing too ridiculous. We're just going to show you. Let me do this. That's not what I thought that did. <laughs> oh man, that's not going to stop. Okay. Alright. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay, so, let's see ourselves a little Neath bot. Alright, so, we are at level 20. Our basic attacks are going to be hitting at 1.21, which is uh, pretty abysmal. And then we have about 90 physical power, just base, uh, plus 100% of physical power, technically speaking. Uh, it doesn't scale because it's our, you know, native stats, so. Um, there we go, 52. She's got minor points. <laughs> You can push her back with that, you can block her basic attacks with the monument, come around, uh, she's not going to let me so this back here. Here, let me just stun you. I missed. This is good. Alright, just wait a second. She's, she's kind of walking back. Uh, this is a and there's the stun. Okay, so if you've seen the stun, I don't feel like uh, dying or whatever. It's important. It's actually reasonably important. I want to see if I can push one of these Odins into uh, a wall or something. Uh, this would be easy to show the pillar off. Um, the pillar stun is actually pretty pivotal in on hers playstyle, so it's kind of one of the major I'm things. Right oh, my opulence. He's got the stun right there, and he takes 108, 108 damage in the sand, and then outside the sand, he takes nine, 90, I should say. Um, and this is just on an enemy with no protections or anything like that. I, I need this got a partial build. Um, partial kit. Partial build. Partial item build. So, um, I mean, hopefully, obviously, you normally want to start with Hunter's Blessing. 
um, and there are two other options that I have used in him successfully, um, though there is a third other option that is a bit more of a meme, but we'll get into that in a moment. Recommended relics? Well, I mean, he's a hunter, so that is Purification, Aegis, and Blink. Wouldn't really recommend much else. You can get Bracer if you're playing against somebody who does a lot of damage at once, you know, burst, so like um, Junkui or Loki. Um, other than that, this is these three. These are pretty across the board, unless you're playing as a Guardian. If you play as a Guardian, you get Aegis. Ugh. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Alright, so. Transcendence is a fantastic starter for um, on her. So normally you do want to start with Hunter's Blessing and then the Morning Star, just the first little Morning Star piece. So uh, when you get the first Morning Star piece, you're going to farm all the way up to the top Transcendence if possible. Um, if you have to back and get charged first, that's okay, but uh, it's not, you know, preferred. So let's see. Additionally, I like to go for Warrior Tabby because this is a mainly power strength build. So, or not power strength, I should say, yeah, basic attack strength. Uh, so, so we're going for like straight power. All right, and you can see our scaling down in the bottom is already going pretty well. Um, now, I'm going to talk about the Odysseus tree because you can build Odysseus bow. Um, you can even build it as a starter item for him, um, which is all up to you. I like to build Ikival, or Ikival, I believe is how you say it, um, just because of the extra penetration that it gives you. Um, so then we go on to Crusher. You're going to be hitting a lot of abilities on people, or at least you should, so you get additional penetration as well. Uh, but enemies taken hit by your abilities will now get additional damage dealt to them, which is pretty valuable. Um, and then in terms of lifesteal, you can go between Soul Eater or Blood Forge. I prefer Blood Forge, but I know a lot of other people that prefer Soul Eater because of the cooldown reduction and, um, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, your physical abilities to heal you for 15% of damage dealt, so, um, that's the evolved form of Soul Eater, but people like that because on her is a very ability hungry, um, god. So, <coughs> Uh, to round out this build, I would do something like Executioner. Um, if you want to grab crit, you can, but you probably don't need it. Uh, I don't really recommend Shinsai. I don't. So maximum health. Yeah, I don't, I don't. We'll just go with Executioner. It's the safest bet. Um, and when it comes to penetration, um, alternatives are few and far between. I'd say when it comes to final item, I, I like building Silver Branch just because I like building Silver Branch. Um, but. As you can see, for each .02 you go over cap, you gain one physical power. Um, I don't typically build Silver Branch on, on her because he has a lower starting base stat for attack speed. Um, Titan's Bane is another good option, but I usually use Titan's Bane more on physical attackers. But, um, I mean, you can if you want to. That's about it. Executioner is cheaper. That's all I can really say about that specific topic. Um, so this is the first main build. This is the sort of stacking build. Um, that I recommend for, I honestly would recommend for, can you stop it, Conquest and Joust, um, Clash is another option when it comes to, uh, the sort of all-round build. Um, kind of exploring here, I don't really know what's over here. Rawr. <laughs> I, uh, I came over here to see if I could build stacks with these minions really quick. So, um, no, I can't. It's only ten. Cool. What's over here? Buffs. Right. That's something I haven't been showing. Is buffs. Yeah, for 50 stacks. I'll just kill the hell out of Ethan. Alright, so. Let's show you this first one. And his basic combos are very simple and easy to get down. As you can see, all I really have to do is put down this pillar and then stun her on it. But since she's standing right in front of the wall, I can still stun her. Let's get a nice little dash. Dodge, I say. Um, and then the other option is you can place the pillar. Those are. Good to hit, but not the most important thing in your kit. You don't have to hit your ultimate. It's definitely not necessary. And you'll, you'll see my uh, DPS scaling. The higher, um, the more I hit her, 
And I'll, I'll show you when she's not in the pillar that my basic attacks actually do significantly less damage. Um, but even then, like, the more basic attacks I hit on her in a row, the more and more and more and more damage I do because of my stacks. So, this pillar a couple more times just to get these full stacks. I'll show you this build with potions. This really is the best build that I recommend for basically all around play. Um, you obviously want to try and adjust your build for counter building, and at some point I will do a video on counter building because counter building is the most important thing in Smite, or at least that's my personal. Opinion. I think there's a lot of people that would agree with me on that. Menos um inimigo, continue assim. Alright, let's. I, I is there a, yeah there is okay i was about to, was about to say but there's probably like a stack button and yeah boom there you go all right soul leader is now evolved so now physical abilities will deal 15 percent um to to heal me back um and then transcendence three percent of mana is converted to physical power um which is why that oh, actually it's another reason why soul leader is a better item because it gives you mana so it's going to scale nicely with soul or with transcendence um, Soul Eater uh, could be built earlier. You don't really need Warrior Tabby, but um, in game game modes like Conquest, Joust, um, maybe not so much Joust, but definitely Clash, you need movement speed. So um, here we are with the fully evolved. And it's not that huge of an improvement, but it is noticeable, at least. If you know what you're looking for, you can see that the numbers are consistently higher. Alright, so, this is the first build. Those are the basic combos. There's not really too much into on her. Um, Combo-wise, ability-wise, he's not that complex. He's not um, ridiculously difficult to figure out. It's, it's quite simple, really. So, we're going to do this. And you pretty much always want to start him with... Uh, Ninja Tabby. So the next build, I would probably do something like this, and uh, this is a bit more of an uh, and I mean a bit more of a throwaway build. So um, once again, start transcendence, go into Ninja Tabby instead of uh, the other the other alternative. Um, so yeah, so transcendence and the Ninja Tabby. And you can already see where this build is going here when I've gotten this item. And next. I would like to build Crusher, but because this is a basic attack build, I'm skipping it. And I'm going for just straight as much as many basic attacks as I can get. Um, obviously you can train up for Atlantis, but the passive is too fun. Deathbringer. Um Rage is fun and all, but Deathbringer, man, Deathbringer is just the best crit item that we have. Um, and then you want some physical power to back everything up, so um, we could just do Jotun's Wrath, just to keep it simple, or Forge. now that I think about it, might be even better, simply because you do more damage based on people that are CC'd, and if you've got this pillar and you're hitting somebody who's in the pillar, well you're applying CC, especially once you hit the stun, because then technically they have both a slow and a stun on them. So let's actually put this behind her so I can... A my okay. And that's a pretty good uh, showcase of why I normally don't build crit on, on her, because his crit rate is not fantastic. Like, it just seems like it's significantly lower than other gods. And then... You can see that the... Goes through four different gods. You can see the the props. <laughs> four different, and then the range of the yield is fantastic. I hit every single Odin in the line. So, Bop. <laughs> cooldown is real low. Uh, the other build I like to do is a cooldown. Oh. Build, so that's actually what I'm going to showcase here. Um, so I would trade out like this. Get this out of here. So you can see something consistent here is that we really really like to build um, transcendence here on good old on her. So back to cooldowns. Um where is shifters? Okay. And oh wait, this is the wrong build. Okay. Nope. So Hydras and then Oh this guy's in my base attack. Yeah. Okay, so and then Crusher. 
There we go. This is the one of my more favorite builds because you get these ridiculously low cooldowns eventually. Um, you can also build Frostbound instead of Runeforge, but I just like Runeforge because of uh, because of the CC. A monument, and you can see I'm hitting 400, 600 damage with no crits. I'm not hitting crits, but it looks like crits. Which is something important about Season 5 is that they're phasing crit out a little bit. It's not so prevalent in the meta, but big crit-like damage is. If there were some way to put crit into this build, it, yeah, it'd be pretty tasty. Okay. So now, look at my next uh, slightly uh, silly build. Um, this is something I typically like to build on Ho Yi because this is arguably one of the best Ho Yi builds you can have. Um, just all around. It's it's A, a good time, and B, not necessarily expected. So, And it doesn't play into his kit very well, but <laughs> it is a fun time. So, um, I'll let her wail on me for a second. You'll see that I'll be resisting her damage quite a bit more than I was before. Not too considerable, but <laughs> it's, it's noticeably tankier. <laughs> You still do decent damage. Um, again, this is more of a unit oriented build. Or at least that's the god that I normally use this build on. But it's it's too good not to show not to show you. Alright, so next is the the true tank build that I have for on her. Um, and it's not nearly as viable as the others that I've shown. So we're gonna start with Warrior Tabby, so we still have our damage. Okay. And let's see, let's see, let's see. I like to get breastplate. And then over here. Um do, 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 Hydras. And I Soul Eater. I was top of my class with a four. And then usually I mean typically Soul Eater would be built last, uh, you usually want to build your life steal final, but there are some exceptions to that. Um where is Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Hide Aversion is very specific. Um, Mantle of Discord is another good option if you are getting CC'd like crazy. Um, you get that cooldown reductions from your thing, and then you also gain CC immunity, which is fantastic. CC immunity at 30% health, which is important, but still. Then you also have Spirit Rope, which does the same thing, but better. Um, it gives you mi uh, damage mitigation whenever you're hit by hard CC, which is fantastic. So, um, options but not what I choose. So now I'm a bit tankier. Um, I, I evolved this, right? I did, okay. These are evolved as well. Hit me. She's not gonna weigh the shield. And let's say it's a human player, they're missing a couple shots. Or I'm dodging a few shots. <laughs> so stupid broken. And I can still do damage. So that's fun. Um, I think those are all the builds I really wanted to show. Um, he is capable of soloing Bull Demon with this build. And uh, all the other builds shown, he's able to solo the Bull Demon and Joust. I'm not really sure about the Fire Giant, it's more of a team oriented goal, anyways, but you know what? It's worth a shot to try. Should be able to at level 20. I don't see why not. Especially when he's built a tank like this. Oh, okay. The stim from the sand still applies to uh, fire giants. This is really interesting. I have no idea. Okay, yeah, so this build is, is fully capable of soloing fire giants. And use your fire giant buff, which is gonna make. Oh man, that previous build do way too much damage. Let me see here. One last build just for testing sake. It's gonna be a full physical power build. So let's do Jotun's Crusher Executioner. Let's do. 
cranny. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do tranny. Mm, let's see how much damage we do. We have all the buffs. No crit. <laughs> Muito bem. <laughs> you can see the, the uh, attack speed coming through here, and I, apparently I still have Odysseus bow. Um, buff. I don't, I don't understand what's happening there. But, uh, getting some attack speed boosts here. Things from execution are better. But can he solo a tower? Of course he can. He's level 20. This is a showcase. Ahir is a little bit broken right now in the current meta. He's just a little OP. Um, he just a ridiculous amount of damage. He doesn't need to build crit. So It's so easy to build him. So easy to hit his ability, so easy to do damages on her. It's, it's, it's honestly laughable at this point. How how good he is in the current meta. So do I recommend him? Yes. Like 1000% yes. I definitely recommend on her. <coughs> Whether that's for ranked or casual. Joust, Arena, Conquest, Siege, Clash, Game of the Day, Adventure. On is relevant. It's easy to build. And uh, that will wrap up the... Uh, guide so if you have any questions or any comments or concerns feel free to drop them down below and i'll see you guys in the next one